Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Today is my uh, 69th episode. Uh, if I'm going too fast, please type in YouTube, you know, the program name Basket Starfish, our language core, and you can find all the past episodes. Once again, you know, my research for the past 20 something years, you know, when I travel from place to place, is to try to find the common core of all. Uh, languages. Uh, I believe that in ancient time, you know, we all started, you know, as a single core and we spread out every single so-called family tree is not true. Every single uh, uh, family is just a branch of the same organism, like a basket starfish. And I am presenting to you an Asian female point of view. And of course, you know, uh, as a traveler, you know, I don't sit in the, in the classroom, and but I do go to use a lot of library. I do take a lot of different courses but I just look at things in a different way I don't want to be educated into something very very narrow okay so I'm going to start this week's uh, talk uh, I'm going to talk uh, continue last week's talk about flow something that flows or flies you know hovering above something and since the ancient time it seems that we already have one very common core sound that I will compare uh, for you this week okay so um, here it is I'll start it now and this is the basket starfish you can see uh, the core is what I mean what we share and every family is just a branch because I don't believe that we are separate uh, family trees and because it usher in human hierarchy and only when we believe that we all start at the same time you know uh, since ancient time that we begin to treat each other in a more equal ground so uh, I think the family tree uh, business should be uh, changed okay and uh, again uh, I, I show you some pictures about the float and the word fly. Um, they all told you that, you know, it, it came from the proto-indo-european root of the blue okay so I compare it to you uh, last week you know become between this so-called proto-indo-european with the Cantonese sound of Piu or the Mandarin sound of Piao okay so uh, actually we say the same sound and mean exactly the same thing and I also show you those pictures you know of a parade in Hong Kong showing you how the, the flows are going and and how the flies are actually standing on top of this flows and what we call pure okay so the sound is still retained uh, you know like the very very ancient sound so um, of course, you know, I want you to have a bubble in your head, you know, when you try to understand all this. Uh, when I travel from country to country, sometimes, you know, I live inside the context. It's very different when you just read in the books, you know, when something is separated from the real context. When you are living in the context, things are actually much easier to understand. And um, this is the uh, ancient writing of Pew or Pew. Okay, so uh, you can understand that, you know, it's something related to water and this is a picture I also show last week you know since ancient time they already you know blew up you know the um, uh, animal skin and flow them around along the river you know in order to travel and of course you know uh, since very ancient time we were already using those for trade purposes but when you have extra you know you bring it to another place where they don't have then you know trade actually started like that and then then uh, river travel is actually very common since ancient time and they are not as stagnant as we were taught to be and uh, since our ancestors actually communicate it with each other you know the proof of it is just uh, the sound keep sharing by all our cultures and in this slide I will only sh uh, compare two very uh, so-called different uh, family trees you know one is the, the, the Chinese of course I use the Cantonese as the base and I compare it with Sanskrit okay look at this this is peel something uh, exactly sounds like the pro so-called proto-indo-european root and then it uh, means you know to flow the long and to fly the long and po this one as you can see from the ancient writing is actually you know like a bubble right there and you can actually use it to go along the river and we we change the tone you can pronounce it as a po po pow something like that it actually means to flow or it means popping up and down 
down, you know, a liquid, or, or, or it actually means a bubble itself. And then the sound foul. This is a shifting sound, you know, for between the P and the F. And foul actually means directly float, okay? So uh, this is Sanskrit right there. Pluta is means to flown, to flow, or a flow, okay? Um, I have to put uh, something in between because I don't want you to read it as a flower because it can be misleading if you read it as in English. But uh, what I try to mean is anything that floats. So today, you know, of course, you know, due to the grammar, you know, you actually call it a float. But a flower is actually generally anything that can float, including a bubble, okay? So uh, this is Sanskrit again. Again, uh, polar. Polar is actually to blow something expanded. As you can see, as I say, if you live through a reality, things are very easy to understand. You know, so uh, it's easy to understand that you have to expand this, you know, uh, animal skin in order to float. Okay, and pula in in also Sanskrit it means blown, inflated, or it means a float. So you will see that is a whole system, and then um, the polar right there, and you know, easily transfer to become the lat so-called Latin word bula. Bula actually means means the bubble as you can see something blown up and extended. It's actually you know, a bubble, you know, so you will see that this, uh, the, the Latin, the Sanskrit, and then the, and then the Cantonese, um, including what the, they call, tell you is Proto Indo European, they all carry the same sound. And I have said it again and again it is grammar that separates us as different cultures, and precisely the linguists keep putting their attention on in grammar and telling you that we are different. But I will, sh I, I am just trying to show you another way. Of of looking and hearing languages that you understand that we all come from one big family okay so um so this pole as i said is exactly the same sound as blue and means exact exactly either a bubble or or to flow or to bob even the english word bobbing up and down okay so is it a proto-indo-european or pure eurocentric view of the last you know 150 years because of the economic power you know or the Linguists are leading you to one direction, telling you that you know all the uh, more advanced culture only belong to your European branch. So this is not true because all these writing were there, you know, thousands of years ago. So um, it it proved that thousands of years ago they were exactly using the same sound, you know, or similar sound to express similar meanings already. So this is the core sound pure, and then um, uh, what you will notice in this slide you will see that you know this is a very natural shifting it happened again and again in different words you know whenever you see a b it can happen as a p in another language or p in another language or f or v or even a w so you will see that this is a r common range of shifting you know of the sound shifting and and exactly you know if you only believe that things come from greek so i'll show you the greek you know the blues you know the means to sail and then and flota means to, you know swim and sail and float and fuhren in German actually also means to sail you will see this fu plu flow or this sound and then and then the fluito in in Latin is float and then this is a Chinese writing more than three thousand something years ago and it, it pronounces fu fu is actually you know there is a marker of the road it actually means a fujio in Latin what is fujio in Latin? Latin, it means fugitive. So there are two types, two ways of running away fast. You know, one way is on the road, you know, the other way is actually by river. This is fau right there. Okay, fau is actually means to float along the river. And of course, fau and flow is exactly the same core word. And then the flow in English, the float in, 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 in French. And then this, you can look at the picture, you can understand this is po or pow or po okay in in Cantonese sound that also means to flow or bubble and then uh, which links to the Sanskrit blue as the root you know of Sanskrit everything that flows to start with the blue and then uh, I show you last week this is co uh, connected to flying spark although it has to do with fire but you have to understand they were actually describing the flying the floating movement okay so it has 
as the sound of pew or pew. This is also sound shifting right there for the Chinese to express different meaning. But from the same word, you know, you will see that uh, we breathe another two words. One is to flow along in river. The other is to flow along with the wind. You can understand it is fly too, okay? So um, uh, once again, I go back to Sanskrit, the pool. Pool is anything, again, it's expanded. And polar is something blown and inflated, a bubble again. So all this floating um, meaning, you know, it still exists alongside with the sound. And then uh, again, you know, I show you this Chinese word. And it shows, uh, it has the sound of fei. Um, in the early dictionary, it actually means feather. But as time went by, it actually means to fly. But uh, this fei actually uh, coincide very uh, closely with the Greek uh, idea of figas. Figas is also to fly away means to flee, okay? To flee and then uh, you, I go back to this side. The fei right there connects to this feather. The feather actually uh, uh, mutated into pluma in the in the Latin uh, branch. And then the plu, as you can see, connect back right back to the to the Sanskrit plu means something that floats around. Of course, you have to have feather, you know, the wings to fly around, okay? So uh, the Chinese writing will be like this. And nowadays, we still write it like this to mean fly, okay? And then, um, of course, you know, fei is to fly. And then, of course, if you fly faster, it will be flee. And then uh, it goes back to the French, will be vola. You know, you that's why I keep saying that the sound shifting, you will see that the F also shifted to V sound. And then the V sound, of course, gradually become your understanding of the wing too, okay? So this uh, sound shifting is a very important feature of all the languages. And sometimes it actually mutated within the same languages between Cantonese and Mandarin, even within the Chinese uh, different dialects, we also sometimes mutate between all these. These are not just between uh, different cultures, sometimes even within the same culture, the same mutation and all the same, same sound shifting also happens, okay? So I will take you to, again, the share core sound, uh, to drum it into a year again and again, once again, the Chinese uh, foul means to flow as you can see from the picture picture this person is flowing along the river and this pole with a bubble you know that flows along the river and this pole and pa with this pew in Indo-European and then the pew and pew again uh, meaning something flies around and flows around and this fan actually means you know uh, further extended for the Chinese means a flood as you can see the some uh, water is this overflowing this water once again you know this L shape if you read it as a, a Phoenician writing it is an L writing actually so you will see that you know in the ancient time a lot of the symbol were actually shared as well and when I talk about the liquid uh, consonants you know the L M N and R you have already seen that a lot of the L uh, writing is actually added in the West you know to express anything related to liquid so it still follow the same rules right there and then the fan means flood and then the fire in a way you know it means when it's boiling something overflows you know so um, as in a way you know sometimes fire can be read as uh, can be read as but to you will see that the F and the B also interchange you will see that this is within the Chinese language now I will show you what happened in all the other languages Languages. and Vietnamese boat is also a form and and then the Greek anything start with play also to with flood just like uh, any of the sound right there and plusios is rich of course if you have a lot of water if you have the control of water the ancient time is actually very equal you know both words they are not from different roots they are actually extended into different meaning when you can control the water when you know how to manipulate your your elements in the water you can actually get rich you know and also if you can store up a lot of water that means you can farm you can uh, do husbandry you can feed your animals so this is 
closely related to being rich you know you have to pay attention to the owner of the water okay even now as a lot of the scientists will be also saying that the water will cause the future wars so don't look you know at water as something innocent innocent I mean water is just actually something very very strategic since ancient time okay so uh, go back to our sound just flow is actually um, start with the word bubble this is in Greek and then uh, uh, in Arabic fadan actually means to flood as you can see this fi right there fa, fi. and then the fur actually means something to boil of course you know when you boil a liquid you know uh, the ancient also observed that sometimes it will overflow and 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 that's the similar way of explaining to people how something overflows okay so um in Galician in Spain you know uh, the north uh, the south and I mean the north West part of Spain, uh, fervor is to boil. Of course, you know when you're fervent, when and you're talking about heat. So something, you know, at the meaning also extended to other direction. But over here it is something hot and and wet. Okay, fervor is to boil. Okay, Romanian and pluti is to float. Sanskrit, of course, pluta is to float as well. So on this side, other than this, this foyam is, actually means flow in Hungarian. And then the Estonian, you put us, you know, the pool right there, like exactly like this pool right there. It means flood. And then the povla also, Bosnian is also flood. And then the Catalan, you know, a part of Spain is also flux. And then to boil or spuye. And then actually in Cantonese, when we say bow something, is to boil up something something okay so um, the French flow, float is also to float and then boye is also to boil so uh, once again you see all the shifting sound the B F and the P again and again and again um, the other way you know I show you is also sometimes sound survive not as a word just also as preposition if you look at that you know the Chinese will call it the pole okay the pole and the and it is flow Thing, it means foul okay the pole and pow and foul means to flow and of course you know you can see bubble and the English word bob also the bob up and down and and uh, just hear the sound and then you will get this uh, preposition as above okay above and that's over okay so all this sound is actually came from very ancient ancient time okay so um, I once again you know everyone only believe that everything can from come from Greek the Greek is only a culture when a lot of the things when they conquer so many land they actually collected a lot of different words and that's why you have a feeling that it is the root but no it is not the root it is just a collector of all the ancient cultures okay the Greek apo is uh, also you know all this meaning about above or not over okay it and this per uh, and bangla is indian language upori this is pronounced as po okay even though you see in the a is an o sound and then this is polish you know the po right there the po right there all this word are really means the preposition of above on and over okay the bulgarian also directly just po okay bulgarian and danish also po this is an o sound as well and then the finish la poleia so you will see that all this po 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 exactly like this one something that flows on top okay so the hungarian also velu is also to to above on top and arabic is folk and 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 when i was in yemen living in yemen when they keep saying folk something i just have constantly the chinese image of fo something fo means something flows on top above something okay so sometimes i can understand arabic using my chinese mind okay so the folk in Maltese you know no matter how you spell it it is the sound that is more important and the Norwegian also you have the sound or fur also the fur and then and the Dutch the, the bo and boven 
and exactly like when you say English, when you say bop up and down and also above, okay? So this is the survival of the, of the sound as this proposition, okay? So once again, I will show you pictures to make you understand it easier. The plur as the, the what they call the Proto-Indo-European become the flow. It will be very un easy to understand with these Hittite images when the ancient were also using this animal float or also they make them into a bowl so they can put more goods and also put people in without getting wet okay so the Sanskrit will be Pula and, and as the float and then the Chinese will be Po and Pu and Fao and then uh, then you will ask me why the other you know all the other ancient world they have the word collect Gufa and Koraco and then I will show you why because since ancient time there are different ways of saying the same thing and this is a leather bag you know they 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 this is a, how they pronounce a leather bag okay the Kush and then you will see the K sound right there of course you know the Sumerian you know when they write uh, when they try to write a raft this is the name of a raft of course there's the indicator of this leather bag it's called Kila so what is it what was it like it is something like this okay so the Akkadian was still using this indicator to show you that it is made of a leather bag of course these are all leather bags with itself and then it gets the pronunciation of Kalaku or Kalak and now if you google it, it you should spell it like this otherwise you know the computer wouldn't tell you that but in ancient time we just depend on our ears you know no one standardized the spelling like now and in, in in Iraq, the Iraqi will say Kalak, you know, this is how they write it since they adopted the Arabic script to write. So you will see that this is a Gufa and once again, it depends on what material you made it of, you know, doesn't it look like a basket? And this, this is the Koraku of the Indian. Just look at the earlier writing. This is a K of the uh, he Egyptian hieroglyph. This is the Chinese K or K. Exactly, sometimes we use it, you know, to, to mean something you sit on. And of course, you can also sit on the boat right there, right? On, sit on a Koraku, okay? And also, this is the car. You will see that if if you go back to ancient pictures, it is actually much easier to understand. So I took a walk along the Charles River the other day in Boston. And I took this picture and then that's how, you know, you really need different pictures to express, you know, very complicated things, you know, in front of your eyes. Of course, when you see the duck right there, you will say that this is floating, using the word float, right? And of course, you know, um, and if you see it, uh, 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 if you see, say it's a float, you can also mean it is a bubble a boy and of course this boy and bubble also comes from from um, also related I should say related to the his um, <clears throat> Spanish boya is to up uh, to float and also bubuha and the English word, verb of bob is to go up and down just like a bubble okay <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and of course you know when you see this you will see that it's a boat and how would you express this then if everything you call is a boat? <coughs> of course, if you look at this, you know, if you refer to different material, if it's made of, you know, uh, plants, <coughs> you can still call it a coraco or you can also call, use a leather to make it. And that's why you have all this word of kayak and canoe to distinguish different boats that you use, right? So this is how human beings need to come up with different words to express different material very concretely. So you have to respect the ancient, how concrete they are, okay? So once again, are these two words different? Are they Proto-Indo-European or mere, mere Eurocentric views, okay? Because most of the people are just te teaching you the Western way of looking at things. Now I'm just trying to tell you that we also, as an Asian, we can look at things at a different point of view. And this blue and blue actually comes from the same root. And it's not as the computer tells you, you know, one has a different root, root of uh, 
like float. The other has a different root of uh, plenty. So they are not different. They are actually different branch of the same thing. Okay. So as I said, uh, water is a, a wealth, and wealth also move along the river. And I show you two words to express this to show you pulmonary. You know the English word. You know actually comes from the ancient knowledge of the lungs. You know, as ability to float. You know this is a, a, a out of your whole organs. You know the whole body's organ. The lung is the only organ that flows in the in the water. Uh, that's known in the ancient time. I as a child because I as uh, when I help my mother to wash the pig's lung and to cook them. Of course, that's the only organ that flows. I remember I used to play along with it when I was a child. So um, this is a very easy observation. Of course, nowadays you don't even know where animals comes from, and they only come from the supermarket or already cut up, and no one washes anything, so no one pays attention. But uh, again, you know, the pool actually comes from the ability of the lung to flow. But the plus, you know, it actually means to sail, as you can see. But look at this Chinese word. We actually try to express this as uh, also uh, in the same way it flows in the water, okay? And then for us, it already has a mute. What is kept is already mutated into this sound. It's fei, okay? The fei, uh, it's lung. It exactly also means to flow or to fly. But sometimes we use the same word. We pronounce it as poi. What is poi? It also means plenty or luxurious. Why is it the Chinese word also exactly shows, you know, uh, the uh, Western meaning? Look at this. You know, the, the poi, sometimes we write it this way to dis distinguish it more with the water part. Poi definitely means plenty and copious. We use this word you know, interchangeably to mean exactly the same thing, plenty or the lung. And you can see that the Greek also used to play on to mean plenty or more. Look at this, what flows and what's more. Exactly the way the Chinese are using it, okay? The pluvia in Latin is rainwater. Planus is also full and plenty and then the Chinese also use all this pew pew sound to miss plenty and the pew again to means flow and but you look at this you know sometimes we change the tone pew it actually means a vessel that flows so it is the sound that counts not the uh, writing okay so I will stop right here please you know type